Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe back and I'm going to do my weekly update for, um, this is, I'm actually pre filming this on Saturday, so it'll be for Sunday, um, April 14th, 2024. So I don't normally pre, um, film my, um, updates just because Sunday's the morning that I usually can, um, film, but I'm going, uh, down to my parents' house, uh, later today, kitty. And then um, I'm going to bend on Sunday. Our plans have kind of changed due to, um, I talked about some family health situations uh, last week. One of my relatives um, passed away, um, the one who was in uh, Minnesota. So my dad and my mom are flying out on Monday. So we need to be back from bend Sunday night so that in the morning they'll um, have to drive to the airport and it's you know, they live a couple hours south of the airport. So, um, I'll be leaving at the same time. Cause I'll just, that's normally when I get up for work. So it's not a big deal. So, um, I still have Monday off. Um, even though now I won't be doing much of anything, but again, I wish I could go with them, but it just, I can't, um, you know, financially as well as work wise, uh, it was, you know, too quick of a turn for me to get that time off. So, um, but that was kind of sad. My other relative is still, uh, touch and go kind of thing. Um, she's doing better, but we're not sure. So it's not, it's not been a great week. Let me just say, uh, mentally. So I think I really, um, kind of shut down on a lot of things just to kind of deal with a lot of the emotional stuff. So, um, but that's kind of the update. So it's not, not the greatest news, but it wasn't unexpected, um, with what was going on. So anyway, so things are, I'm just doing this to kind of get it out. Cause I don't, I probably won't be have a time to, uh, film anything else uh for next week so I thought okay well, well we can get my update done if even if I do it the day before so and I've read enough so it's not a problem and I'd also hate to wait until next week to do everything because I have a tendency to read a lot and then I forget <laughs> so, or details so anyway we're gonna do that so um the cats are don't know yet that I'm leaving for two days but they'll just have to deal anyway so um other than that there's not much else going on that I could think of there is um I can't think of it. I just, it's been, it's been a very emotional week, um, especially the last few days. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about the books that I finished, the ones I'm in the middle of and what I think I'm going to read in the next week. Uh, first, I had one DNF. Um, so I have a lot of books that I put on my 24 and 24 um, or 2024 list that were kind of, uh, I wasn't sure about. I have a couple of uh, books I put on my, you know, self-destruct and a lot of them are historical fictions. And I'm finding that I own a lot of historical fiction, but I am not gravita gravitating towards them anymore or picking them up. And so I've decided I have to find a way to start getting through them or to get just get rid of them. So I, um, I might do a try a chapter um, maybe next month of historical fictions that I do still want to try to see if I would like because this is one I would have tried and been like oh I, I don't want to read this series and that's kind of sad so anyway this is on my 24 in 2024 so I will be putting a DNF on it um and that is The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper um I did try this it's not because of its writing it's not because not even really of it, it not not because it's a subject matter I think I just didn't um, I just didn't click with it and I only got like 25 pages in. I got like two chapters. I didn't get very far, but, um, I just didn't, maybe I got three chapters. I got a little over three chapters in, I think. Anyway, I just, I didn't get very far. Um, I just didn't find it compelling enough to continue. I, I mean, I felt sorry for the women who are in this. This is talking about, um, some women who are, uh, in a brothel, um, in, um, Pompeii, you know, before, <laughs> uh, the Sivius blows. Anyway, I don't sure how the whole uh, trilogy goes. I don't know how it goes. There was just something about this that I just, I, I just wasn't connecting. And I know I didn't give it a huge amount of time, but I also didn't care enough to give it more time than the 30 some pages I read. So, um, I am DNFing this and the series and it's just not for me. I will again, resell this and it doesn't matter. I mean, I bought that book from the UK um, I think it through book depository or black holes. I can't remember which, um, because it was in hardback here and I didn't want to wait for the hardback and then I never picked it up. And now the series is complete. And, um, I was like, well, I need to read this to see if I want to get the other books. And I just, I, I don't anyway. So that book is gone. So I did have one DNF this week and, um, it's off one of my, um, a couple of my lists that I was thinking about. So anyway, so, um, oh, did I, 
I forgot one of my books. Hold on. Sorry. Um, if the camera angle changes, because <laughs> I hit it anyway. Um, so I did, uh, read and finish, um, indexing reflections by Shawnee McGuire. I had read indexing last week. I had the physical from my library, but I've had the ebook for a long time on my Kindle. And then I, um, bought the audiobook for like $1.99. So I read that last week and then I decided to continue right away. I didn't mean to continue this, uh, Sunday. Um, but I did, I think I finished it on Monday. Um, I really enjoyed this little duology so far. I don't know if there's any more coming out. It's like one of those books where, or series that she did, but it doesn't have like a clear, is this the end kind of thing. I mean, it wraps up pretty good in this book, but I'm not sure. I, I think she always wrote down that she might continue in the future, but it's been like, you know, eight or nine years. So um, this is a, it's a, it's a duology. It's about, um, it's an urban fantasy with fairy tale elements. We are following a government agency who is um, protecting the world from fairy tales because fairy tales try to come true. Um, they snatch people and take over their lives and make them into Snow Whites, make them into Sleeping Beauties, make them into uh, like Jack and the Beanstalk kind of character or, you know, Billy, uh, Billy, oh, I can't think of the Billy, the goat. <laughs> was gruff. I don't know. Anyway, point is there are different ones and different, uh, you know, they, and it's really funny because some of them are hilarious how, how the twist on the fairy tale is done. And these government, these agents are going in to try to stop them. And there's an overarching plot from through the book. Um, the first book was written as serialies. So every chapter was released individually on Kindle, um, back in, I think 2013 or 14, I don't remember which year. And then, um, I think it was put together the next year into a book and then this continues it this one doesn't read quite the same as that one did because that was very much like each chapter was very self-contained in a lot of ways even though there is an overarching plot um this one was definitely a plot throughout um still had a lot of the the feelings of a serial so i don't know if this one was for sure or not but um i didn't like this one as much as the first one just because i think the first one was just the first one and it had it was so so original with some of the um the different fairy tales but i did enjoy this one i'm glad i continued on fairly quickly like <laughs> after finishing the other one just to uh get it done i also got this on audio um i don't remember now who the audio oh uh mary robin at koal did both audiobooks and again she is a very good um she's a you know an author but she also does uh narration for a lot of shauna mcguire books um again she does the october day ones which i haven't tried yet um I've read the first book physically many, many years ago and I have to reread it. So I haven't tried the audiobooks for that, but I might, I'm not sure on that series if I'm going to read when I go to that because I want to finish a couple of series that I'm in the middle of right now before I, uh, urban fantasy ones before I pick that one up again. Um, but this was really fun because it was just a duology um, and she did a good um, audiobooking. Um, it's not the best Shawnee McGuire. Like again, these were just kind of fun. Um, you know, and again, they're 10 years old, so it's not like they're, it's not perfect, but I think they were just a fun urban fantasy and it was a fun ride. So that was the first thing I I did finish. I totally had forgotten about that until I looked. I'm like, wait, I'm missing a book. That's because it was, I just had it auto, you know, um, digitally. Um, and then um, on through, you know, from Saturday to Wednesday, I was doing my buddy read with Berna at Berna's Book of Adventures. And we were continuing the Love at Stake series with book seven, Forbidden Nights with a Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. So this was a fun one. Not one of my favorites, um, just because of some of the things that both the main characters were kind of doing. But really overall, um, I really enjoyed this. It was really funny. Laugh out loud funny in the beginning because they always are. These are very much uh, funny um, paranormal romances. And this one has to do with one of the vampires who we've seen throughout the series. Um, you know, she's always, she's been a character, you know, more in the background and stuff, but she's pretty, <laughs> she has pretty anger manage management issues. And so she's getting sued by some people and she's told to go to anger management a second time to try to re do those. And then um, the other guy, um, the main, I mean, the love interest, he is, um, somebody we we've met in the other books but haven't got to know too well but he had kind of a secret going on and that kind of plays throughout the the book even though I don't if you've read the series you know the secret but I I don't want to give that away anyway but it was really a fun uh you know vampire 
uh, romance with other stuff and other world building. There's still the world's kind of growing and we're bringing in more characters and um, a couple interesting ha things happened at the end. So I'm excited to go push on to the next book. So we will be reading book eight in May. Um, both of us um, are looking forward to that. So anyway, that was a good, good buddy read. Always good to do that. I did it. Oh, I did read this on audio by Chloe Campbell. Um, so audiobook narrators change throughout this series um, with each book. Because again, the couple changes. I'm guessing that's why. Anyway, um, then I picked up on a whim uh, Terminal Alliance by Jim C. Hines. So Jim C. Hines, I have like three of his, I have four of his series on my shelf, but two of them I have read. One, I read one book. One of them I read two books. <laughs> And then the other one I hadn't started yet, and I hadn't started this one either. So he's one of those authors where I've picked up multiple books because I did like some of the books I've read, but I have not completed any of his series because I started them before they were done. So I need to go back to the other two series that I've started before and read those through. One's a trilogy and one's a quartet. So I need to read those, <laughs> reread the books I've read, and then continue. But I started this sci-fi because um, it just sounded fun. I don't know. I just, I don't know if somebody was reading this and I saw somebody have a copy of uh, the series, but I just, I picked it up on a whim. Um, the library had the audiobook, which was done by Rebecca Mitchell, which was really well done. Um, this is, um, it says book one of the janitors of the post-apocalypse. <laughs> so what it is, is that there are janitors on this, um, this is a, a futuristic where he, the earth has been uh, demolished. Like there's just uh, everybody pretty much went uh, feral and um, they pretty much, you know, the whole um, the whole planet, you know, went that way and they don't know why. And then uh, one of the um, these uh, beings came and they um, tried to reintroduce the humans to like thought and reason and stuff like that. And there's this whole process with that. But what it is they're on the ship and um they're usually the workforce the ones who are the cleaners and stuff but also like the military arm because uh humans are considered very dangerous uh due to their feral roots and um they're on a ship and something happens and they they get the whole ship gets infected and almost everyone but the cleaning crew who were all in their protective gear are uh go feral because of some virus and they're only protected because they had their suits on when they were cleaning <laughs> and so it shows it the eighth uh so the um main character uh mops um she is uh the head of the the cleaning <laughs> crew and she is now suddenly in charge of the ship and it's them trying to figure out where the virus how they got the virus and who created the virus and why it's um happening and it there's this whole conspiracy and things going on it was really good it, it went in directions i didn't expect but it was also really funny throughout i laughed a lot the characters are hilarious um i just i really enjoyed the main character of you know of her coming kind of into her own to become the leader i mean she was a leader but like you know now she's you know in charge of this ship and there's only a few crew members that again are are functional at this time so it was really fun this little guy is a little jerk sometimes, so that was fun too. There's a lot of interesting aliens. Um, so there's a lot of fun. It wraps up really well for a first book in a trilogy. I will continue on. Um, I did find the second book at a library book sale uh, this week. So um, I will continue on. I, I might get the audiobook again because um, I thought Rebecca Mitchell did a good job. But uh, again, Jim C. Hines is one of those authors where I have a lot of his books on my shelves. And I need to finish the series, especially the ones that are all complete. So I'm going to probably focus on this one first, and then I will go back to his Libromancer and the Stepsister um, series. I have also Jig, whatever that one is, um, but I haven't started that one. So that's later on my list. But I'm going to try to get through this one, this series this year, and then maybe um, next year focus on, have one of the other series um, on my list to reread the first or second book and then... Um, continue on so but I really did enjoy that it was kind of surprised because I didn't plan to read that um I do want to mention that most all these books um except for the one I did on audio the first the um indexing reflection all my books are coming from my shelf um even if I get an audiobook from the library you know when they're, they're marking marking off I'm doing the TBR clear out by Katie at Books and Things 
and um, I'm trying to read more books that I own, but I'm do using the audiobooks to get through some of them because I was still in a really high audiobook mood earlier in the week. Um, right now I'm not, which is kind of, we'll see how it goes today when I'm supposed to drive my, you know, be in my car for an hour and 45 minutes and I'm not sure I'm going to be listening to an audiobook. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so, but the first part of the week I listened to a lot of audio, um, but then I switched over to physical uh, midweek because I started reading Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw and I did not like the audiobook narrator, so <laughs> I switched back to my physical. This is a used book that I picked up last uh, week. No, last month. Sorry, last month. And um, I got a lot of comments on it wondering how it was going to go. And uh, I really enjoyed this, actually. I was surprised. I wasn't sure because I'd heard mixed reviews when it came out. Um, this is an urban fantasy, which, again, I did not know was modern until you look in the background. You can see it is a modern London setting. But I didn't know that when I picked it up. <laughs> I thought it was more historical because it's following um, Greta um, Helsing. So... Uh, she is a doctor who has specialized in the undead and so her practice is kind of hidden I mean people who know about her know to come to her but she's not like visibly you know she's not visibly the doctor of the undead she just she her clinic is kind of hidden uh, from the public view kind of thing and so she knows a lot of vampires and ghouls and um and other creatures, banshees, and other <laughs> things. And so uh, she gets kind of wrapped up in this mystery. There are some sudden, there's some killers um, who are just randomly killing m several people in the London area. And so the whole town is really scared. And then they come after one of the vampires, Varney, who is Varney the vampire from uh, classical references. Anyway, so uh, this was really fun because a lot of the characters in here are somehow related to, um, you know, a classic horror book. I thought it was, it's, it's really interesting because, um, again, I'd read the, the, um, Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss, which does kind of the same thing. So I read many classics that were linked to this. So again, uh, Helsing is, you know, related to Van Helsing from, um, Dracula. Then we had Barney, who is Barney the Vampire, which was a Penny Dreadful. Um, there's also, um, Ruthvern, um, Lord v Ruthvern, who is the character in The Vampire by John Polidori. No. Polidori? Polidori, I think. And I read that last week because he had mentioned it. And it, they, these characters are nothing like their, uh, other, uh, their, the characters that they're portrayed from the novels because they say that they wrote, they were, the books that were written on them were all lies and everything. <laughs> So that was kind of fun. But mostly it's it's this group of uh, people who are dealing with this, this threat of people of this group that's trying to kill the undead and consider them, you know, unclean and ungodly and all that kind of stuff. So um, it was kind of like a normal murder mystery. Um, again, there was a serial killer group kind of thing trying to kill people and just vampires and other things were connected and uh again Greta is our main character but she has a lot of friends and um, um it was really it went in directions didn't expect and it was just fun it was just a fun ride um for an urban fantasy uh because it had all the classical references to different things but she twisted them which is what I always enjoy um as I said I did read the, read the vampire by um John um, Polidori, and then I ordered a copy of Barney the Vampire because I do not own that one. I think I've I have another Penny Dreadful. I did. I read the Werewolf one uh, a couple years ago, so I might be reading Barney the Vampire uh, for October this year. We'll see what happens. But I do want to continue this story series. I really enjoy this. I did start <laughs> a couple of series this week. <laughs> I didn't finish one because I finished the indexing, but. I did start three series this week, <laughs> so this is the other one, and I really, I really enjoyed it. So I will be looking for book two and three, and that one. And then I picked up a book that I've been meaning to pick up for a year, and that is "Can't Spell Treason Without T" uh, by Rebecca Thorne. This is the first book in the Tomes and T series, a cozy fantasy steeped with love. Anyway, um, I bought the indie version um, last year after. Um, sometime after I read Legends and Lattes. She does um, say that she definitely got this book out because uh, of 
Travis Baldry's uh, book because it kind of opened up the whole cozy fantasy. So she was able to write what she wanted because he had already, he kind of started that being very popular. And so she uh, got this out. I think it was came out last year or the end of the year before. I can't remember. Um, 2022. So yeah, it came out, um, but it came out like six months, a couple months after uh, Legends and Lattes. So there was like a, it was, it was a few months afterwards and I bought it at some point. I think I bought it last year sometime when I heard about it. Um, and then there's a second book, um, that comes out or had come out as well. Um, indie published. And so now she's been picked up and so it's, they're coming out, um, traditionally. And so I wanted to read this because I wanted to see if I wanted to pick up the traditionally published ones because they're, um, well, to support the author, if I liked it, and then they had cool sprayed edges. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to know if I wanted to pick up, because I did not own the second one, so I was already going to have to wait for the the traditionally published ones if I wanted to continue the series. I don't know if it's only a duology. That's all that I show that's in this series, but I guess I'll see when I get to the second book, because I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it. I think this really is on the same level um, kind of thing of Legends and Lattes. We have a, a two people who are kind of running away from their their uh their <laughs> their court lives kind of thing for different reasons um and they go to this small uh northern town to kind of hide out and they um, want to have a bookstore and a tea shop so they, it's really cute it has the whole starting up the the business and then meeting the town folks so it's very legends and lattes and a lot but it's fantasy is very different the magic systems in here are different and who has magic and stuff because one of we're following a mage and um a, a person a, a personal guard to the queen and it's very, um, a very different, you know, situation than Legends and Lattes. But I can see the influences there of, uh, or how you could connect to this and say that this is very much, um, something that if you like Legends and Lattes, you might like this one. I really like this. I like the town folk. I like the way things are. Right. This is sapphic and other things there. It just, it had cute, it had a lot of great characters, a lot of funny things that happened in here. I thought this was just a fun ride. It, you know, I read this in two days. It was, um, it's like 430 some pages and it was just, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I just, I love the cover art and I'm glad they kept it for the new versions as well, because I did pre-order the first book in traditionally published comes out in May and the second book, uh, Pirates. Oh, is it a Pirate's Life for Tea or something? I don't remember what the second one is called, but I did, um, pre-order that as well. And that's in October. So I will have to wait till October to continue the series, but I really, really enjoyed this and I do recommend this. So um, when it comes out, you might want to pick it up, maybe get it from the, your library. But I thought it was just fun, especially if you like Legends and Lattes. I think this is a good, like, uh, I've read several books that said they're like for fans of Legends and Lattes and they've fallen short. I thought this one was the best of the ones that are kind of in that realm that you could say were is like kind of like legends of lattes but different as i said the world is different the the um there is some there is some political stuff in here but very little but i'm really excited for where it goes what the adventure that goes into the next book so i am i'm very i i really enjoyed this and i'm, I'm glad i read that and i'm glad i i forced myself to finally get to it so i am that's what i've finished this week so i did pretty good i think um, I am in the middle of two books. I have started Broderick by Katie Robert on audio. Oh, I didn't write that. There's a cast of narrators. So this is book two in the Sabine Valley uh, series. She has abandoned the series after the first two books because she got really popular. And now she has to go to a schedule with the traditionally published when this was still indie. So um, I, um, I do want to just finish up what she has out because it might be years before she comes back to the series. And I just want to be able to say I've read that book and check off <laughs> on my Katie Robert uh, series. I still have quite a few to read. <laughs> but um, th so this one is um, kind of more is very gangster like uh, the first book, Abel, um, the all the brothers come back um, after they were exiled. I don't remember how many years they're, they're exiled for. So I think eight years, I don't remember. And, um, something happened and all the, the all the gangs kind of ganged up on them. Um, cause the city was split or this valley was split up, um, between, um, three or four, I can't remember how many, um, gangs. And they all like took them out, this family out. 
And so all the siblings ran and they, cause they were able to escape, but now they've come back and they pretty much fought their way back into power um, through this certain meeting that they have to have that happened in the first book. And then they claimed brides from all of the big families in order to kind of keep them hostage for the next year and a day. So like hand fasting where they have to, um, so that the, so the families won't attack because they have their, their, um, their heirs are now, uh, the brides of these brothers. And again, the, all the pairings were different. They weren't all, um, male, female. There's a lot of male, male and other and female, you know, or their first one was a male, female, male. MMF. Anyway, the point is, is that was a fun one. And I just, I mean, again, these aren't perfect or anything, but I do want to get to Roderick. He, this one might be a male, female, female. I think, I think that's how it goes. <laughs> we'll see what happens because Roderick um, is with Malone. And then I think there is his, his best friend, um, who, um, Shiloh, I think she gets kind of in. I'm not sure. I only read chapter one on audio. And then, as I said, I stopped listening to audio for a couple of days. So today I'm hoping to listen to that um, on my drive to my parents. And then on the way back on Monday morning, we'll see what happens. We'll see. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to listen to. But I've started it. So it's I need to get through it. <laughs> again, I have the audio from the library. So Again, trying to get stuff off. And then physically, I'm reading The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson. So I've only read about 70 pages last night. Um, and I'm really enjoying this. This is exactly what it says it is. This is two werewolves who have to fake date for different reasons. She has a grandmother who wants her to get mated so she can have grandkids or great grandkids. And then she has, then he is a uh, unmated alpha. So there's all these stigmas with both of them that um, they are hiding certain parts of themselves. And his, somebody revealed it to the, the hospital board because they're both doctors. She's an ER doctor and he's a cardiologist or uh, whatever term they use for that. Uh, he, um, and he uh, is had to come up with a, a mate to, so that they don't think that he's kind of wild, even though he's been working there for years and nothing's ever happened. And, you know, but he's, a, he's this is definitely grumpy sunshine, um, fake dating. <laughs> so far and I really enjoyed it I like um this but I have to say that so far this is like kind of like the love hypothesis but with werewolves <laughs> so I'm not sure how I feel about that yet so we'll see what happens um and I mean that by how I mean he, he's not the same as um Adam is in the love hypothesis but it really feels like it and again she's not really like all of but there's and there's something about their relationship that reminds me some of the scenes it feels like I'm back in the love hypothesis so I'm not sure how I'm gonna come out of this I really enjoy it so far um it's not like it's bad because it kind of real kind of reminds me of the love hypothesis but I'm just I was surprised at how much I feel like that right now so we'll see what happens um when I get further in but this is going to be my physical read for the weekend I'm hoping to get it done um probably after I get back from my parents Anyway, so then I don't know what I'm going to read next. I um, have like a couple of possibilities. These are all ones on my TBR that I'd like to, well, they're all on my TBR, but I mean, they're all a lot of them that I want to get to this month. We'll see what happens. I do have what, um, what Feast at Night by T. Kingfisher, the second book in that series, which I still don't know the series. Something about Soldier. I don't remember. I keep forgetting to look that up, but I do want to read that. That's a little horror um, book. I really think I might pick up Ashes and the Star Cursed King by Carissa Broadbent. I put off reading the second in this um, Nightborn duet um, duology, book two. I just, I don't know why I put this off. Maybe it's because it's chunky. But really, I don't know why. It's really, I mean, it's like 600 pages. And it's that's really not that bad. But I just, I haven't picked it up. And um, I need to do that. So it might be this week. We'll see how I feel. Um, I also might pick up Imprudence by Gail Character, which is book two in the pair, the Custard Protocol. So it follows Imprudence, or it follows Prudence. This is, Prudence is the main character. <laughs> the first book was Prudence, and then the second one. Uh, and I think they um, have the aftermath of what happened in the first book. They, something's not going well <laughs> with what their decisions of what they did. And um, so there's problems. Anyway, so um, I do want to... 
uh, read this to continue this series. This is a series I want to finish this year. And I, I am, um, I signed up to go see her in May. I can't remember what day she's going to be in Milwaukee at spoken word. I don't know. There's a new bookstore or new to me bookstore over in Milwaukee, Oregon. And, um, um, she's going to be there. So I signed up to go some sa Sunday, Sunday afternoon to drive over to, <laughs> North, uh, Southeast Portland to, uh, go get, uh, to watch, to see her again. Cause it's been a while since I've, um, seen her in person. And so, um, anyway, I'm looking forward to that, but, um, anyway, but I need to get that. So that's, this is, a uh, uh, is steampunk urban fantasy. Um, you know, um, and then there's a lot of, um, um, vampires, werewolves, other things. And, uh, Prue has her own, uh, abilities, which makes a lot of difference to a lot of people anyway. And then I might pick up <laughs> Filthy Rich Vampire by, um, Geneva, uh, Geneva Lee. <laughs> Blah, my eyes. The reason why I just, I bought this book, um, end of last year or early this year. I can't remember. I think it was late last year. And again, they've released almost all the books in this series. There's four books in this part of the series. I think the fourth one comes out in May and I still haven't read the first book. So I really want to read this. I know this has to do with a vampire who is single, but like one of the wealthiest ones and everybody wants him to get married. And he's just like, I don't want to deal with this. And he, somehow reason he meets this celloist Thea and somehow they, they're going to fake date, I think or something like that. or I don't know if she has to stay with him for a while I don't know something about it he's supposed to protect her and stuff anyway it's just I don't know I want to read this one so this might be what I pick up after uh the fake mate I don't know because again this is a series and they have and I think there's a spin-off series called um Filthy Rich Fay, which the first book comes out I think in June but I still I mean again if this is a four book series this part of it the vampire one so I don't know it's a vampire story it sounds like it's fake dating um I don't know <laughs> I want to read this so this might be my next book we will see what happens I don't know but I'd like to get to all these books you know in the next couple weeks so it just depends what my mood is what I'm feeling like um again with everything going on this is all very much escapism for me so Anyway, so I think that's it. I think that's everything. Um, I was very good at the last library book sale that I went to this week. Um, I only got six books. And as I said, one of them was Terminal, um, I should show you, Terminal Uprising, which I will get to probably in the next uh, month or two uh, to continue that series. So that was really cool. That was awesome. And then um, I have been buying a little bit too many books. Um, most of them on sale. I did, I did buy some books I probably shouldn't have, but I did already. And then today I'm probably going to go to Barnes & Noble because it's triple stamps. Anyway, before I go to my parents' house, I'm going to stop on the way down and go to Bridgeport and uh, check out that Barnes & Noble and see if it's better than mine because I have not been liking the um, buy one, get one, half off selections that my store has done recently. They're like really pathetic. And I see other people in their vlogs showing their buy one, get one half off. And I'm so upset half the time because I'm like, why don't we have that one as a buy one, get one half off? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to try that Barnes & Noble down there, and uh, which is in, I think, Tualatin. Anyway, so the point is, is I'm going to try another one and see what happens. But um, I think that, and they said, I'm going to go hang out with my parents and we're going to go to Ben for Sunday to see my cousin's um kid in her play which should be fun but that's gonna be a long day because we have to drive there and back it's a long time anyway so we'll see what happens um that's it um cooper and i will probably see you next week i'll talk to you later bye